persons. And this notion of, of Trinity in which there is a, a Father, a Son, and a Holy Spirit, if, if Christians were to examine the history of their own faith, what they would come up with is is a is a startling discovery, and it was one that uh, was very influential on myself, namely that there is not a single doctrine in Christianity, including the Trinity, that is not found in one of the pagan religions that existed at the time in the Roman Empire. So when we look at the issue of Trinity and we look at the issue specifically of the deity of uh, Christ as Christians view it, we have to realize that what was going on at the time, and I firmly believe that the Apostle Paul was the, the starter of this movement of what's called syncretism, and he was taking the original faith of the uh, Christian believers, the, the truth, as it were, and in order to get a larger audience, um, blended it or began to blend it with pagan notions. And so you find um, the idea of the Son of God throughout the uh, world. In, at that time, you find the idea of a virgin mother and a virgin birth was also prevalent. And I know we believe that, and that's the one element of truth there. But the way that Paul worked it in and the later church worked it in was in a very pagan notion in that there's actually kind of a mother deity. And if you look at Roman Catholic thought, that's how Mary is viewed. And so the Trinity is just part of that whole. And so I would encourage... Um, you to um, challenge your Christian friends to read about their own history and read about it from many different sources. And I think that will help. Yes. Hello? Yes, how may I help you? Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Um, I, uh, I'm uh, very amazed uh, and uh, also I want to congratulate you thank you uh, for um, discovering uh, Islam in a very logical and methodical way uh, and I had similar experience to yours except that I came here to the US in the eight, late 60s so uh, basically I went to church here I read the Bible before even reading the Quran uh -huh. Later, I discovered that all the questions that I ever had in my mind about existence and life and everything else, the answers were found in the Quran. Yes. Except that I did not have enough uh, uh, of what it took to understand everything, and I realized that, and I realized that I would need a, a instructor or a mentor. Sure. And I followed suit on that. But nevertheless, last night I was listening also to the program that you appeared on. And oh, okay. The, yeah. There was one um, thing that I wanted to mention. First of all, if it's possible to have some kind of an email for you, like if it's on Salon TV, so that people like me who would be interested to communicate ideas or questions to you, we would be able to. And, uh, and another point it was about the uh, of worshiping God, which uh, was raised last night. Mm -hmm. uh, the word worship, which is translated in English, in English and in Farsi, uh, for example, they say parastesh or setayesh, is more suitable for the word alhamd, which is praise and yes. worship. But for abd, we, which is a very powerful word in Arabic, it's a word, Ya'abudun. It, in essence, it means that inherently, Allah has intended us to have Him as our Lord, our, our Master, and no one else. Yes. Inherently, He is the Master. Yes. And we are supposed to be following His rule. 
But he said, yeah, they do. That means, if they, in a way, he's giving us a choice that we have to work toward that and obey him. And of course, obedience is, uh, in another ayah, is to obey Allah and obey the messenger and obey the uh, progeny of the messenger, which is the family of the prophet, to select yeah. imams from the descendants of Abraham, which is the descendants of Muhammad sure, sure. So the word Abd is more like obedience than worshiping. So in okay. essence, we are supposed to see Allah as our master. Yes. Yes, indeed. Another similitude that I saw in the way that you have uh, reached uh, Islam is in the second ayah of Surah Jum'ah. It says, that he, he has brought the, the, among the unleaded people a messenger from among them and of course, we know that the Prophet has been is referenced as um, letters. That means he's clean from the letters that mankind teach each other and learn from each other. Mm-hmm. Okay. And mankind are unleathered because they are unleathered in the sense that what the Prophet, the Messenger, learned from Allah, yeah. we we did not learn that. So, Brother, we, we have... Unleatheredness is his purity, and our unleatheredness is the fact that we are not that pure. Yes. Okay. Brother, we have some other callers that we need to take, and, and I I really appreciate those things that you shared, and I I agree with you on that, and those are very important, uh, very important points. Uh, so thank you for sharing those. Okay, yes. May, how may I help you? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam, Brother Chris. Uh, uh, may Allah bless you. You are in a unique position to Thank you. not only hopefully inshallah create better understanding among Muslims. Actually, I want to keep my comment very brief. I'm an interfaith activist in the Salt Lake area. Okay. And uh, we have needs every once in a while for speakers like yourself. And this is not the first time, but I do this quite often, you know, as a program over the years. And I'm not sure whether you are at liberty to, an- to announce your contact information. Or whether, you know, if you can, then we'll note it down that way. Or you can take my number. I don't know how it would be. Because I've been trying to be in touch with you for future uh, programs. Okay. What, what I would encourage you to do is to contact uh, Salam TV, and they can forward you my contact information. There, there's a, this is Ulam Hassan, and Jazakallah Khair, God bless you, and Inshallah we'll be in touch. Thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Okay. So, yes, how may I help you? You're on Salam TV. Hello? Hello, Assalamu Alaikum. Alaikum Salam. Hi. Uh, I just have a few questions. Okay. Uh, I wanted to know uh, how uh, if you ha- if your family has turned has made the choice that you made or not to be a Shia. Okay, I'm sorry. Could you repeat that? Uh, has your family made the same choice as you to be Shia? Ah, no, my family has not. Uh, uh, unfortunately. Um, Unfortunately, um, my daughter uh, is not really interested in religion, and my um, uh, parents and siblings uh, are either very strong Christians or they also are not uh, interested. But oh. but inshallah, that will change in the future. So if you sure. pray well, for uh, them, that'd so be how wonderful. How many children do you have? I have one. One, so one your daughter. daughter. How old is she? She's 22. 22. Yes. Are you rich? Can you uh, maybe marry her, huh? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Do you so have any other she's questions? She's 22 years old? Yes. Do you have any uh, other questions? 12. So, but I just had, had that question to ask you about okay. uh, if your family made the same okay. choice as you. Okay, yes. No, they, they will finally turn to you. Inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah.